Welcome to Profit Boss Radio, where successful women have paved the road to their own financial freedom. Each week, your host, Hillary Hendershot, financial coach, money mindset expert, and experienced wealth manager, will help you discover the keys to the wealth and peace of mind you want and deserve in her no-nonsense and authentic style, starting right now. Welcome to Profit Boss Radio, episode 69, a financial checklist for traveling internationally. This is going to be a short and sweet episode. I'm coming to you right now from the beautiful Mediterranean. I am on the coast of Barcelona, many of you know. And my first tip for you is don't let people know when you're traveling internationally. And this is a financial tip because, you know, on social media, you never know who you're friends with and you want, you're posting pictures from your gorgeous tropical vacation. Meanwhile, someone knows that your home is unmanned and unlocked or unlockable and too many people find themselves victims of crime or theft because they've let people know on social media that they were out of town. And why is this trip an exception for me? Well, it's because we just moved and we've got a lot of people working on the house and we have our real estate agent and our assistant sort of manning the lockbox and there's people at the house basically every day we're out of town. So this is my one exception. The one time I'm going to be vocal and public about the fact that we're out of town. Financially speaking, before you leave town, definitely let your banks and credit card companies know that you're going to be out of town. You cannot dial a toll-free American number from out of town. So if you are traveling internationally, your credit card gets declined, you can't pick up the phone and call that 800 number on the back of your credit card because there's no such thing as a toll-free phone number to a United States phone from an international location. You have to have a local phone number and that really messed me up a couple times when I've traveled previously. Obviously, one great place to get to find out resources where you can get ATM cards or checking accounts that don't charge conversion fees is Nerd Wallet. Also, you want to look at credit cards that don't charge conversion fees. Right now, my recommendation for that checking account is Charles Schwab and for the credit card, Capital One. So Capital One offers a credit card that doesn't charge conversion fees and Charles Schwab offers an account that doesn't charge conversion fees. So you want to man arm yourself, not man yourself, arm yourself with a bunch of ways to pay. You can pay with your ATM card that's also a credit card. You can pay with an actual credit card. Or when you get to that country, you can pay with cash or you can pull out cash. There are ways to get, for example, I could have gotten euros in the United States, but I just get them at the ATM when I arrive. So definitely handle that before you go. As far as food goes, airport food is overpriced and sometimes unhealthy. And if you need to buy every meal out when you arrive at your international destination, you're going to end up probably being hungry sometimes because it takes a while to find food sometimes and you might be unhappy with that which you find. So one recommendation is to go to the grocery store and get, for example, the Sargento Balance snack packs that have cheese, nuts, and dried fruit in them. I have some little power bars, balance bars that I love that I find to be really filling. You can take them as a snack on the plane and I also recommend having a handful of them in your in your suitcase at all times so that you don't don't end up with a sugar low that nobody likes. Okay, pretty much everywhere you go internationally has great public transportation op- options. Mostly they are safe. And a lot of times they're a lot cheaper than a taxi. If you're going to sit in a taxi, you're going to sit in traffic just like you would on a public bus. And you can save lots of dollars this way by traveling on the cheap. Also, the last time I was in Europe, now mind you, this was 12 or 13 years ago, but I felt like everyone would rave about the Euro rail and you would get this sort of all in train pass and then you would be able to go anywhere you wanted on the train. And I did the research and actually there were lots of discount airlines that were popping up in Europe and those flights were a lot cheaper than getting on the train. And I found them to be more flexible and just generally more enjoyable. So do your research and don't make assumptions about some of those most expensive items, line items on your international travel budget, which are your accommodations, your your food, and your travel. 
this is going to sound like a little bit of a nitty gritty detail, but I do think that your bag when you travel internationally is very important. And I mean your purse, the, the bag that you use to carry your financial items, money, credit cards, and travel documents when you're out of your hotel room and walking around town. One of the things that was said to me when I came to Barcelona this time around is, hey, Barcelona is the pickpocket capital of the world. You know, I don't know. Maybe when Barcelonians travel to San Francisco, people tell those people that San Francisco is the pickpocket capital of the world. I mean, I think we're all a little bit xenophobic, but you don't want to lose your travel documents or, or credit cards when you're out of town. So it's important to keep them secure. For me, I just prefer to have everything on me. One thing I do that's really comes in handy is I take a picture of my, my and my husband's passports and our credit cards. Cards. Those pictures get uploaded to my Evernote account. So I have them on the web. I have them on my mobile device. It's really nice now that, for example, I'm a Verizon customer. I called Verizon. I said, I'm traveling internationally. They said, great, for $10 a day, your phone works in Spain exactly the way that it works in the United States. Epic. That's amazing, right? So right on my phone at all times, I have my passport, my credit card, so I know what those documents are, what the numbers are. And I keep my passport in a, in a purse. So I use a crossbody bag and I keep the passports in the zippered pocket in the back and I always keep the top zipper shut. So even if someone were to reach in the front pocket, you know, you don't, the bag doesn't have to have a front pocket, but mine happens to, there's nothing in there. And the money is in a zippered locked pouch inside and I just feel better with it on my person. And, you know, I keep it across my body so that no one can ride by on a moped or run by or ride by on a, a bicycle and take it off me. You know, you hear stories about things like that happening. And if you do have a hotel with a safe, then just leave the passports in the safe. That's fine as well. But again, I do think it's worth shopping for and taking the time to get the right crossbody bag. Men, I don't no, I don't really have a great recommendation for you. If you don't want to carry a man purse, you should probably travel with a woman who will carry a crossbody bag for you. There you go. I would definitely lean towards getting a place that has a kitchen. I mean, if you want to go on tours and explore, you're not somewhere where it would be a foodie experience type of trip. So like Barcelona is obviously a place where I want to eat, try to all the, the restaurants I can, but maybe if you're in more of a backcountry kind of a place or more of an adventure travel kind of place, then just go to the local grocery store and buy things to cook with. Get a place with a kitchen. Hostels have kitchens. Airbnbs have kitchens and they'll have a refrigerator. It makes a huge difference in being able to snack throughout the day and maybe just anchor on an early dinner, having that be the local fare. But other than that, you just provide your own food. If you're traveling in a group, you can plan on each person in the group taking a night to make a meal for the group. And like I said, always pack protein bars and buy apples or fruit at the local grocery store. Those are really fast options for breakfasts. Outside the U.S., hostels are very common. I stayed in hostels a lot when I traveled in my 20s. A lot of them have a really cool vibe or theme. And a hostel, if you don't know, is a place where lots of people stay in rooms together. How do I say? Everyone doesn't always have a private room, but they have this vibe that's like it's young and it's energetic and, and there are people everywhere and there's a shared kitchen and often a bar and they can be really fun and a great place to meet people and they're very inexpensive. And you can get private rooms and bathrooms in hostels if you don't like the dorm experience, but you can still save a ton of money on lodgings. Okay, a lot of times you go and you want to buy gifts for people and... The fact is most of the souvenirs just aren't locally made. They're sort of taking advantage of tourists' desire to buy kitschy local things. So find a special memento that will bring you back to that place and time and plan to spend money on that. My husband and I buy one piece of art from each place that we go and we have one room in our house where we hang. That's our travel room. And so if you go in there, you'd see a bunch of mismatched art that we love, but things that we remember, for example, buying on the beach in Maui or buying on Tower Bridge in London. And that's just really special for us. 
definitely do your homework. Know what the exchange rate is. For example, the conversion from dollars to euros right now is about 1 to 1.1. When I traveled many years ago, it was more like 1 to 1.4 or 1.5. So the dollar has really grown in value vis-a-vis the euro. And that means it's a lot cheaper to travel as an American in Europe. And But you want to know approximately what is that exchange rate. So when you're out shopping, you're at the market, you can quickly get a sense of what's the actual price to you of that product that you're thinking about buying. Learn key phrases in the language of the country you're visiting, such as how much, what's the price. That'll help you not get ripped off or make a connection by using the native language and possibly get you a better deal in the end. Finally, Airbnb is everywhere. Don't pay resort fees or $15 for a bottle of water at a hotel. Find a cool flat or a house in the area you're you're traveling to. You've got a kitchen, which is one of my previous tips, your own space, and the nightly rates can be surprisingly inexpensive. That's it for this episode of Profit Boss Radio. I hope you found this valuable. Let me know if you have other international travel tips. Come on over to the Profit Boss Facebook group by going to hillaryhendershot.com forward slash Profit Boss. That will redirect you to the group's private entrance. Just simply request access. And then I'd love to hear your international travel tips there. Hey, Profit Boss, you know, sometimes it really does take a village. I don't know if you know what it's like to be a podcaster, but it can be pretty lonely. I sit in my office day in and day out. I put out content that I think is going to help you move closer to your goals. And you know, I need your help. I need your input and I need your opinion. For just six weeks, I have my Listener survey link live at hillaryhendershot.com forward slash podcast survey. And I need to hear from you. I think really warm thoughts of all the people who have filled out that survey so far. And I need to hear from you. I know it's not convenient. I know you're not sitting by your laptop right now, but you'll be there later today. And if you think about it, just go. The link will definitely be in the episode notes for today's episode, but just go to hillaryhendershot.com forward slash podcast survey. It'll take 20 seconds. Fill out my survey. Let me know if there's anything I can do on the show that would make it better. Are the episodes too short? Are the episodes too long? Do I talk too much? Do you want more guests? Do you want more solo episodes? Let me hear from you the questions you want answered. Most importantly, I want to know what it's going to take to move you closer to your financial goals this year. That's what I want to provide for you. And that's what you can tell me how to do at hillaryhendershot.com forward slash podcast survey. Thanks, Profit Boss. Profit Boss, do you hate getting unsolicited advice? I kind of do. Whether it's well-intentioned or not, any kind of splaining just feels, I don't know, sort of aggressive and unwelcome. Of course, when I see someone who's important to me and they're struggling, sometimes it's tough to bite my tongue and just be there for them. So it's kind of a conundrum, right? We aren't here to run our friends' lives, no matter how well-qualified we are to do it. On the other hand, if you discover something that's really made a difference to you, don't you just want to share it with everyone? I mean, it would be really presumptuous of me to just assume that my little podcast is something every listener just can't wait to share. But I do know what I hear from my listeners about how Profit Boss Radio has helped them to start changing old money habits and feel more in control and hopeful about getting out in front of their financial security. And I have to think that for every person I've reached, there are thousands more who might feel the same way if they get the chance. So if you're one of my listeners or in our Facebook group, and you know at least one or two people in your social network could use an encouraging word, let me invite you to let them know about the podcast and about our Facebook group. Just hit the share button in your podcast app. It'll give you a good feeling, I promise. And you'll be helping me accomplish my big audacious goal of empowering a million women to take charge of their financial futures and become millionaires. Lastly, let me just say I'm truly honored to have earned a place in your busy schedule. I know you've got a lot of demands on your time and attention, and I'm so totally grateful for the little part of it that you share with me. So thank you, and let's get together next week for another episode of PBR. Thank you for listening to Profit Boss Radio, where creating success on our own terms happens every day. You're not alone in your journey to a rich life, and that's why Hillary is here to add value in each and every episode. See you next time on the podcast for women and money.